Altitude training is a popular strategy that endurance athletes use to prepare for competing at sea level. But just how long might it take to become fully adapted to living at moderate altitudes? In today's episode, we'll take a look at a natural experiment that looked at the blood profile and fitness responses of cadets over their first year at the U.S. Air Force Academy. Many endurance athletes, such as cyclists, runners, and triathletes, use altitude training to prepare themselves for competing at sea level. The general idea behind this is that living at altitude increases the oxygen carrying capacity of the body. For that reason, many elite athletes will move to a moderate altitude location to live long term, making places like Boulder, Colorado at about 1650 meters a hub for endurance athletes. Many individuals also move to moderate to high altitudes for work, and military personnel often have to operate at these altitudes for extended durations. So the question remains, if you're wanting to become fully adapted to living and working at moderate altitudes, how long does it take? To answer this, brothers and colleagues in 2010 used first-year cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, located at 2,210 meter elevation as a natural experiment in long-term acclimatization. Why is the USAFA an ideal platform for this kind of experiment? Well, it has the advantage that there's about as much scientific control as you can ever have with human participants. Unlike other universities, it's a full boarding school, so all cadets live at USAFA rather than in their own homes. And because of the nature of a military academy, there is very tight control over cadet diet, exercise, sleep, stress, etc. With this study, 55 cadets were studied over 46 weeks in their first year. Blood was taken about every 7 to 8 weeks from weeks 8 to 46. A maximal aerobic capacity test was done about 4 months in and again near the end of the year. The interesting thing that the scientists did was to select two groups of cadets to study. One group were sea level residents living at less than 300 meters for at least the previous two years. The other group were moderate altitude residents living at greater than 1500 meters for at least the previous two years. So were there differences in how low lander cadets and moderate altitude cadets responded over the year? The top graph here shows a concentration for hemoglobin, the main oxygen-carrying molecule in our blood, were consistently higher and moderate compared to sea level cadets throughout the year. And this was the case with all the blood parameters measured. The bottom graph shows maximal aerobic capacity in the two groups at both 4 and 11 months. Neither group improved over the year but the sea level cadets were consistently lower in aerobic capacity at both test points. The authors also did other performance tests throughout the year, with the same patterns again of lower performance in the sea level cadets. So the key message from this study seems to be that full physiological and performance adaptations to moderate altitude doesn't happen over just a few weeks, but indeed may take more than a full year. This is important implications for athletes who want to move to altitude to achieve performance gains, especially if their competitions are also mainly at altitude. For occupational military planners, this also affects planning for work and operations at high altitudes, which might involve screening individuals or providing better education on performance effects at altitude. Hopefully this video has been a highlight of your day. I'm Professor Stephen Chung, and I run the Environmental Ergonomics Laboratory at Brock University in Canada. We post new videos on different topics in environmental physiology every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.